It's time for the Mike Norvell Show, presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone, the show is supported by the Tennessee Lottery, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, and by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Welcome in, everybody. Well, it was a historic evening last night at the Liberty Bowl. The Tigers scored 77 points. 11 different guys scored. And, Coach, you've become the first Memphis head man ever to start his debut year 3-0. and Congratulations, and what a night. Oh, it was a great evening. Uh, you know, uh, for a salute to the 901, to see our guys go out there and, and play at extremely high level, uh, you know, I thought – you know, I challenged our guys. I wanted to see a complete game, and uh, that was something that offense, defense, special teams. I thought every we had our best best week of preparation, and uh, it was fun seeing the guys go out there and, and really just fly around and, and see some success. Yeah, there are things I've never seen before. All the yards, you can say that, but the way your offense works, the diversity here. 11 different guys scored. Now, one of those was Gennard Avery on a defensive play, but have you ever in all your days seen that kind of variety from a football team? I mean, it's what you want. I mean, yeah. you know, I, that's something that shows that we have a lot of guys that can go out and make plays, and, you know, whether it's our running backs, receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks, uh, you know, guys want to maximize their opportunity, and we, we're going to spread the ball around. This is a system that's built for playmakers, and so it's, uh, it's great to see that we're able to disperse the ball so teams can't just key on one person. Well, and I, I guess if, if you want to talk about playmakers, you got 10 of them, different guys. And then there's Jake Elliott. I've never seen this before. He's the leading scorer on the team with 11 points, and yet he didn't kick a field goal. I yeah, mean, that's right. that's a testimony to what you guys got going. Well, I was really proud of our football team and just and proud of all, all the phases. And I thought uh, I thought it was a game that we, we knew we had to come out and start fast. You know, we talked about that last week. And, you know, going against an offense that had big play capabilities, you know, it was, it was great to see some of the early takeaways you know, kind of put them in a position where, you know, we, we got up a couple scores and it kind of changed a little bit of their mindset. And then defensively, here's the thing about the U of M. I don't think we know for sure yet, but I suspect it's fast. I mean, that's that's a team that for the last three years played in the MAC championship game. They won it twice, and you shut them down. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a great uh, team effort, and uh, you know, seeing our guys fly around, they're playing with a lot of confidence. And you know, our coaching staffs, I mean, Coach Long, Coach Ball, Coach Lord, uh, they did a tremendous job of putting together a game plan to let our guys really cut loose and uh, and play at a high level. You couldn't have blueprinted it better than the way it came out. Here's what's coming up. You are going to see some highlights, folks. If you like offensive football. You're going to love the game highlights, that is for sure. Then the Mid-South Chevy Dealers Inside Access, it's all about the band and the team and singing victory. And then finally the AutoZone Road Ahead, and yes it's here, a showdown in Oxford next Saturday night. But the first half highlights are next on the Mike Norvell Show. You're watching the Mike Norvell Show. Nice crowd of 38,000 showed up, and uh, they were going to see something historic. They didn't know it uh, at the time. And you said, Coach, before the game began, this was the best week of practice that you've had so far. Yeah, it was. And, I mean, our guys, we understand that we've got to continue to work to get better. We've got to maximize every day. We're truly focused on the next step. And in each game, you know, that's the biggest game that we have. And I thought the guys did a great job of coming out, starting the game fast, uh, you know, early execution, great job, Tony Pollard, you know, a guy that is just continuing to show up game after game, getting better. I thought Riley had by far had his best game. Uh, you see the confidence that he's growing with. You saw that in game two, carrying over to game three. One of the things we challenged our guys with is we wanted to see some of the big play capability that I knew this offense had. Uh, we had a fourth down that we decided to go for. It was really, uh, you know, we, you know, our guys had done a good job executing. We wanted to get a touchdown on the opening drive. Great execution by Daniel, getting the ball into the end zone. That was a big play. And that's fourth and two. So you rolled the dice and Daniel Montiel paid it off and that is the Mid-South Chevy dealers drive the game and you are off and running and you haven't been behind this whole year and then defense makes plays there's Gennard Avery he wants to play offense now <laughs> you know Gennard you know the prior week he had had one of the best performances I had seen 
uh, from a, impacting, a, impacting an opponent's offense. And then it didn't show up as much in the stat line, but he made sure he got on the stat line this week with a great interception return for a touchdown. Uh, coming back, you know, I, I like the mentality of how our guys are playing. There's Arthur Millette with a big time tackle. I did a great job there. Got dinged up, but was able to get back into the game uh, you know, pretty pretty quickly after that. Uh, sets up our offense. You know, Dorland Dorsey is with a huge run, makes a safety miss. Uh, big play. This was a huge drive for us. Was, I think we're, uh, we had been pinned back at the 10 yard line. We went three plays, 90 yards, capping it off with a great throw and catch here to uh, uh, Phil Mayhew. It, it Phil's another guy that just every week is showing up and making great plays for our offense. Really proud of uh, uh, seeing the offense execute 90, 90 yards, and I think it was about 50 seconds. Look so at that strike. That was a, that was a great throw and catch. Mayhew, by the way, had 72 yards and three catches, and those hands like had glue on them. And then right back, look at the coverage here by Chris Morley playing center field. Another huge play in the game. They're trying to take a shot vertically down the field. Uh, Chris has an opportunity to go up and, and, and really take the ball away from the receiver and uh, was impressed with that. We get the ball back. This rhythm is really flowing well right here. Big, big third down catch by John Williams. Uh, you know, another true freshman yeah. that's showing up, doing some great things. And then uh, uh, the, the, Sam is back. It was good. We had to wait a few weeks and uh, we got him back out there and good to see Sam Kraft uh, uh, in the end zone. He looked 100%. You see how he pulled away from everybody? That's the kind of speed Sam Kraft has. And defense right back to work. Yeah, we talk about capitalizing on opportunities. There's a tip pass uh, uh, interception. You know, when we have we have an opportunity to be around the ball, you got to be you have to position yourself in a good good place. Uh, receiver has a little trouble, tips it up to us, and uh, Dontrell capitalizes with a big play. Coming right off that, we wanted to take a little shot. We're able to slip uh, Tony uh, right through the center of the defense, and uh, Tony finds a way to get the ball in the end zone. Just another one of those touchdown playmakers, and you've already got. Five touchdowns in the book, and uh, well, we know we know that you've got team speed. It was really evident on both sides of the ball last night. Well, it was great to see. Like I said, the number of different people. Here's you know Daryl Henderson. Uh, you just already you calling out all the different backs that are that are impacting the game. Daryl with a couple big runs, a big catch, and then Dorland uh, with another nice run, getting the ball down inside the uh, inside the five yard line. You know, and it was just it was you know, the guys had a ton of confidence. I really was impressed. Uh, just seeing the, the, the tempo which they were pushing in the first half. Uh, Riley with a great job getting the ball in the end zone. And uh, it, it's fun seeing your guys out there celebrating. Here's another big play. You know, we talked last week is that we've missed a lot of opportunities with the vertical shots. We knew that, that was something we worked a ton on this past week. Uh, to see Anthony Miller get back behind the defense uh, was uh, it was pretty exciting. Once again, great ball by Riley. Hits him in stride. Yeah. Uh, touchdown Tigers. That feels good. He was so accurate in this game. 20 of 27 and uh, you know he had 359 yards they actually went on a fourth and two didn't get it and so you burn them and Rod Proctor gets in the books and that was 56 points and a half ties a record from 92 against Tulane. Yeah, that was one of my favorite plays seeing Riley really work himself up into the pocket going through his full progression putting the ball on Proctor it was a great first half. 56 points in the half Take a look at the numbers, all 359 yards through the air, 446 totaled, and three turnovers. You didn't have any, so that's plus nine in basically a game and a half if you go back to the Kansas game. I, I do know that you had one thing you could be upset about. You had a couple of penalties that yep. kind of irked you. You mentioned that at the halftime interview. But other than that, that's a perfect game. Uh, I thought, Like I said, I thought the guys came out and actually, we have to eliminate the penalties. That's one of the biggest things moving forward. Um, when you're playing in big games, you know, you have those uh, uh, those, those setbacks. Uh, that that's can, can show up to cost you. So we definitely have to get that addressed. But uh, I like the way the guys started. And we've only just begun. We've got the whole second half still to be played. Stick around. This is the Mike Norvell Show. You're watching the Mike Norvell Show. An amazing first 30 minutes of football, but still teaching. You still got a half to play. What in the world do you tell your crew at the break? Uh, we just continue to focus on finishing, and that's, that's something that we pride ourselves in. We want to make sure that we come out of halftime, be sharp. Uh, you know, we knew we were going to play a, a lot of different uh, different players, but I wanted to, to continue to have a clean game. Uh, you know, here's a, the play. That, one of the bigger disappointments in the game was the, uh, the targeting call on on, on Marco. Uh, you know, you see the quarterback kind of. 
slides down after he throws it. Uh, you know, I didn't think it was a real uh, malicious hit in any manner. No. But, uh, it actually uh, looks like he hits the top of his chest. I don't know. Is there any appellate process you know, we're that look, you can go through? We're going to look into it. You know, it's a shame. You know, Marco's a senior uh, and you know, missed the second half of this game and then, uh, you know, the first half of the next. Uh, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. But well, those are things we got to continue to, to work through. And uh, But I really pleased, you know, be able to get Jason Stewart in the game. You know, he started off the third, uh, uh, the, the third quarter and big third down conversion there. Kadarian Jones with his yeah. first college catch, a, a, a redshirt freshman. And then, uh, you know, getting back down, continuing to march. We're playing a lot of different backs and continuing to uh, uh, to work the ball down the field and really like to, to see this group uh, come out and, and answer the call and go get an early touchdown. That is uh, Dorlin Dorsius's, I believe it's his 17th touchdown in his career. And it, He's not been around that long, and there is all kinds of defense still being played. Yeah, then there's, there's a, a, you know, another issue of something mm -hmm. we need to get corrected. We got a third down stop. We get a, we end up getting a, a face max penalty that extends the drive. You know, we need to be able to get off the field when we have the opportunity to. But uh, once again, come back on offense. We're able to we're forced into a stop. Come back on offense. Um, you know, I, I really was I was pleased with a lot of things that I saw from this group. I mean, they came out, they played hard. You know, we were able to get Sam some really good work. You know, you know people. Aren't Understand it's it's hard to knock off some of that rust. Sam's been out for uh, four weeks uh, to get him back out and playing was was good to see. And then you know, you'll also seeing some of these young young linemen get in and get some experience was uh, was great not only for uh, for our team but for the future if if those guys are called on to have to come in and play. I know you have faith now in eight different offensive linemen. Did you play them all last night? We played we played them all most definitely, and uh, we were able to see even some young guys, some redshirt freshmen. Uh, you know, try to capitalize on every teaching moment, and that's a, that's the thing I was pleased to see. Uh, you know, here Jamal made a great interception. Jamal Partner uh, comes in. Uh, you know, I'd like to see him get the ball in the end zone. But uh, uh, great, another great, great takeaway sets up the offense inside the ten. Uh, it puts us in a wonderful position to go score. Just another, another name in the books, and there's your quarterback Jason Stewart fighting for yards. And Patrick Taylor finally um, finds the end zone. We, uh, <laughs> how about that? Coach this kid is so terrific. We know that, and he gets in, and the numbers just keep. Mounting up and immediately back on offense after a good defensive stand. And this, I just love watching this kid go, Tony yeah, Pollard. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tony, Patrick, you know, Patrick is, is a great story. You know, coming in as a true freshman, he's had a lot of big plays, big runs. Uh, you know, with McKinnon with him, he's been, to, he's been, he's, been uh, tackled inside the five a couple times, and uh, it was good to see him, you know, finish off in the end zone. And then right here, that was close. I thought he, I thought he might have made it in, but he uh, thought he made it yeah, in. Yeah, they, they they called him out at the three, and then you know we come back to the next play. Great read by Jason, uh, fifth year senior, seeing him in the end zone. Pretty special time. His for first him. career touchdown. So I was really happy, sort of, that Taylor didn't get in. So you have all these different guys score on defense. You're playing, I think threes in this football game. Yeah, we, we, were, we had to play a lot of guys on our football team, and it was a good, it was a good game, a good team effort. I was really pleased to, to see the execution of our of our football team, but we know there's still a lot to improve on. We know that every week, each step, it gets bigger and bigger, and so uh, we put ourselves in a position we want to be. Uh, you were 3-0, and oh, uh, now it's time to move forward and focus on this next week. I love the forced turnovers, four of them. Ferguson's numbers were outstanding. Accuracy, 20 of 27, 359. Anthony Miller, every week he gets close to 100 yards uh, total offense. He's outstanding. And a lift, 11 different players. I don't think we'll ever see that again, folks. So remember that 11 different players scored a touchdown in that game. And that's the most points in the history of the school, minus uh, a game way back in 1916. You know, Tom Shea, whose record you passed, they had 115 against Somerville High School. Other than that, you own it. There you go. Well, uh, it was a great, it was a great team victory, and uh, really pleased with our guys. Um, you know, I, I think it started with the way we practice this week, and so that's something we got to continue to build on. You know, trust. We talk about that a whole lot. You know, trust. It's got to be earned. And so when you go out there and you tell guys that, that, what, what the requirements are and how we need to prepare for them to see the success on game day, man, really uh, puts a lot of validity in, in what we're coaching and, and how these guys are going to perform. I give you 77 reasons to trust. That is for sure. Coming up, a new tradition that began a few years ago. You win, you go, and you sing with the band. How did all this come out? We'll find out in a minute. You're watching The Mike Norvell Show. Welcome back in. A few years ago, it became a ritual. Memphis football players had to learn the fight song and all the words. And then it evolved into singing it with the band. What do the players think? 
love it, you know, because, you know, the, the the leaders usually get up there, you know, direct the band, you got guys on the wall, and the, the band is, you know, getting excited because we're over there with the cheerleaders and all that. It's just, it's awesome because you know, you know you accomplished your goal after that when you're over there singing the fight song. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, and that's another reason to win, you know, because uh, we talk about it all week, we want to go and sing with the band, so you got to win first, really, to do that. So it's just to just see the city happy, just to see everyone just excited as much as we are. So it's a good feeling. It just know that you you're winning with your fans and stuff like that, and just give them opportunity to celebrate you, celebrate with you and for you, and it's just get a good reason to get uh, the fans involved. I'm trying to do that every game. Every time we win, I'm trying to look forward to you know going and, and getting up with the band and singing our fight song. It's the best, it's the best, especially like when we have the uh, one of our teammates doing a little band constructed. <laughs> it's the best though, yeah. Awesome, awesome tradition. Um, you know, that's that's the fun part about winning here, you know, getting getting to do all those cool things and, you know, the traditions keep building and it's, it's exciting for us. Once again, you're with extended family, it feels like, you know, it's kind of like homecoming, you know, you're being with the fan and celebrating with people who also put in a lot of work during the summer, so to share that moment together is special. It's really cool because we know, like, the band is, like, our biggest fan, so we like going straight to the band and going to support the people that have always been here for us. I loved how Ernest Suttles put it. You know, that band works pretty hard. There's two hardworking units coming together. It's a great tradition. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. And it's actually you know, our first meeting coming back from this fall. That's, that's what all the freshmen, all the return, all the returners, they kind of led the, led the fight song for our, for our newcomers. And we had a band director in there. And it was, it was a pretty special moment just to see and, and, and hear the excitement that our players have uh, when we get to go sing there with the band. I hope we see it every single week. Next week, it's here. In Oxford, the Tigers and the Rebels, the AutoZone Road ahead is next. You're watching The Mike Norvell Show. I don't know about the coaching staff, Mike, but I know the fans and a lot of us circled October the 1st for the Memphis Tigers and the Ole Miss Rebels because Ole Miss remembers last year, Memphis remembers last year, and now you've got a couple of teams, as the AutoZone Road Ahead will show you, that are really playing good football, and they meet in Oxford. Yeah, we know this is a big game, and it's a big game because it's the next game. And uh, our approach, I've really been pleased with our guys, taking everything one step at a time. Uh, we know we're going on the road for the first time, so that's yeah. going to be an experience. We've tried to prepare for that uh, with our spring trip to, to Nashville uh, to try to go through and simulate what that's going to be like. Uh, you know, we've gone to Jackson. We've done a lot of different things to prepare for this opportunity, but there's nothing like going and, and doing it for the for the first time. And uh, we know we got a great opponent that we're going to play against, arguably one of the most talented teams in the country. Uh, even their two losses, they were leading by 21 in both of those games. And so we have a great challenge in front of us, but I know our kids are going to work hard and we're going to do everything we can do to put ourselves in a position to be successful. One key matchup just to take a look at. Tell me if I'm right. Your old line against their defensive line. They're monsters up there. Yeah, they have a great defensive line and they, they got some newcomers that have come in that have really established themselves early in this season. Um, you know, that's going to be a big matchup. And then, you know, obviously their offense is one of the best in the country against our defense, which we, we, we're, we're excited to go out there and, and start to compete. I can't wait. A reminder, everybody, that game in Oxford is a 6 o'clock kick. If you're taking the trip down there, go early because the Grove is going to be crazy. We'll see you next Sunday right here. Congratulations. 77 points. What a week for the Tigers. Thank you for watching the Mike Novell Show presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone, the show is supported by the Tennessee Lottery, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, and by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers.